So this is uh, going to be episode 7 now in our little mini-series that we're filming uh, about uh, visually impaired adventures. Uh, you can see here on my left screen I've got some notes to make sure I don't get too sidetracked. Um, just to give you a rundown of what I have on the desk, I've got a printer and scanner combo at the top that you get that's out of camera. So I've got my tablet on the left that's running the left screen, so that's the notes from my tablet to make sure I don't get too sidetracked. I've got my editor running on my screen off to the right here that's run off the laptop. So you guys can see the laptop screen and the editor screen, they're nice and up close to each other, that way I can almost see them together. Um, when I do look at them I've got to kind of adjust my head a little bit as to uh, where I'm looking. That's okay. Um, so, for a while I've been using um, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. However, of recent I've been trialling out uh, DaVinci Resolve. And I'm enjoying using DaVinci Resolve a lot more than I was using uh, Premiere Pro. So, I've only started using a DaVinci Resolve since the start of this series, actually. Um, and I'm enjoying that. So this is the one we're using for the time being. Um, quite a simple program to use. Uh, you can go into your sections. Uh, I've got folders on here for YouTube stuff or videos that I make. So I've got all my folders here for the different stuff. So I've got GoPro, uh, GoPro footage from different days and events. Um, and I can navigate through that. And I can click these and drag them down into this bottom section. Or I can go through and navigate it in this other window. For example, I go back into GoPro stuff. So I can, I don't know, so, so I want to use this clip, I can click and drag, and I can just do that. In the next window, um, so this has windows in the bottom of it, or different sections of the program, so you can go through in sequence. So I've got my media pool, I've got all the media, I've put it in, in the pool. Next section is cut. So um, that's where we get all of our footage. We, for example, we go, okay, we want to watch this through, I've, uh, so I want to have a look, I can scrub through, I can go, oh, I only want to use this section. So I just go through, i say, it goes in and goes out, or I want to use the full section. Um, I can't remember what I did with that stuff. But I can go through, I can scrub, I can cut it, and I can click and drag it onto the timeline here. So if I want to, when I'm adding a new track, I can just click, drag, clip it on the end. Um, I don't want that in this current one, so I'll get rid of it. Take it back to the start for you guys. So, quite simple to use. We've got our uh, little cut section. Next window in is edit. So, edit's pretty awesome. Um, so is um, cut. We've got different uh, different ways that we can um, different ways that we can set out these windows, which is awesome. So next up is cut. If we actually get rid of the insp so we've got two different things. So we can select our clip, watch it through, put it in. So we can I don't know we can select that one, adjust where it goes in, where it goes out, and then we can watch it in sequence in the other window. So this just lets us compare frames and a few other pieces which is great because if I was to drag this clip again say I wanted to use this section which when we scrub through is just the panning out of the different section I can go cool I want to add that in on the end here and I can see in my second window that right after everything's played I've just got that little end section nice and simple to use um, we've got little razor blades so we can cut sections and delete them. So if I wanted to use the razor blade and do a snippet here, I've got two clips here now. Or I can undo that and leave it as one. Um, lots of keyboard shortcuts in this program that we can use. However, so I've gone through, I've clipped all my footage together for what I want to use. Make sure these clips aren't doing weird things. Um, so I've done that, I've clipped it through. Uh, 
by the end of this stage, uh, for this particular one, it's, I've already put three hours to get it into this stage. Next window is Fusion. So I've not played with this too much. Um, so I'm not sure what this section of the program does. I've not played with it much at all. I'm guessing we pick different... Whoa! Pick different sections of it that we can edit in and out. Uh, next up we've got colour. So we can colour grade each different frame, set all the colours at the same section. So we've got all these different adjustments we can we can play with. Um, and there's a whole heap of them across here. So if I was to... I have played with some of these, but not too many of them. So we've got lots of different sections. Dynamic range, red, green and blue mixer, motion effects, camera, colour match. So there's so many different things we can do with the colour. We can make it brighter, we can make it darker, we can make it all one colour, we can take out colours. We can add in transitions and cool other pieces. I think this is where you do that in this program. Next up we have Fairlight. I think that's what this is. Fairlight, yeah. So this is our sound mixing section. So you guys can see along, along the left here I've got three tracks. So if I was to zoom out a little bit. Nope. So you can see in the three tracks. Oh, there's the one I wanted. So if I condense that all down, we can see that most of the audio is coming through track one. We've got a little bit of this section is track two. And then we've got uh, track three audio through this section. So track two is muted. So we won't hear this audio when we play through the video. Um, we'll hear this stuff. So this is where you do your voiceovers in this section. So track three, actually, if I was to rename, I think I can even name the track. Um, I think I oh, know, but this is the one where I was to where I can record. So I often swing this monitor to the left here, so that I can bring my microphone out. I've got a cool little setup that we can bring out. I think I get this microphone from Kmart or something. Um, it's got cool little filters and everything. So when I'm doing my voiceover sections. I'll get my little microphone out. And one of the cool section, cool parts about having this microphone over using, for example, the camera or the GoPro to record a section, then I've got to go through, I've got to find the audio, I've got to clip the audio, and then I've got to adjust it, and I've got to make sure I don't get this audio in the background. For example, when I'm playing it here, we can hear that uh, I believe this section is the boat moving around. Um, so we get a little bit of a preview up in the right hand corner um, of the boat moving around or what's happening in the track. So I've recently put these on one of the swing arms which is fantastic for me because I can bring this nice and close to see. I can put that right in my spot of vision. So we can see that the boat's moving. We can hear it through my desk speakers because I've got the computer going through two desk speakers which is really cool. So there's one on the right, one on the left. And a cool part about this is when we go into Fairlight, Patch Input Output, I can patch the microphone to the track inputs for track 3. So microphone, track inputs for 2, 3. Patch all these. Exit there. I press the R, which is arm for recording. And you guys can now hear, when I bring my mouth in right to this microphone, that it echoes through the desk speakers. So, when I'm going through, I uh, love to have this pop filter on because if I don't, it picks up all that weird wind noise from me breathing. So it adds quite a bit of a difference for me, makes it nicer. So um, I've gone through and done a bit of a voiceover in this section, which you guys can kind of hear when, we, uh, when you guys do actually go through and watch this video. But just, um, I might record in this section. And it's quite simple, so to do it, you've just got this little record button up the top here, and then you've got your stop button. So I can start recording my voiceover section. I don't get too much of an echo through from the um, from the speakers on the microphone. So if I now go press stop, 
I'll untick the recording button, wind that back, and I can press play. So now we don't get any feedback from the um, from the speakers into the microphone, which is fantastic. So I'll get rid of that track audio. So this is makes such a big difference for me because previously I've had to do a lot of editing to try and do voiceovers. So having recently gotten a desk mic makes it my uh, editing so much easier for me to do. Um, and it's fantastic because when that track's not pressed to record, or armed for recording I believe the term is in DaVinci Resolve, it's not putting audio feedback through the desk. Like I can probably, when I put my monitors back in their uh, normal position, I've still got the microphone sticking in between. So I can probably, when I get these back, um, uh, if I was to press arm um, for recording again, so it still kind of picks it up. So when I do get, um, I'm going to change my setup a little bit. I might get a desktop so I can run this program and this one side by side on my large screens. But I can um, I can now record with this in the middle, which is pretty cool. Um, so from there, when we get the audio, we can trim it. We can adjust the little sections of it. Um, and that's pretty cool. Then we get to export. So I think that's what this is. Export or deliver. This one is called delivered. Some it's called export. So up the top left here, we've got so many different options. We can go custom, export for YouTube, Vimeo. I think that's Twitter, Dropbox, H.264, 265. So that's your MP4 files. IMF, Final Cut Pro, uh, put it into Premiere, and a few different ones. So we can go all sorts of stuff. So I can go, uh, what am I calling this one? About DIA with Tim, episode 9. No, 7. I get confused. Um, so I can do that. I can then choose a location to send it to. So that works too. Exporting it to there. These are the one, current ones I've got. So I can press save, format, mp4. 264 keep my uh, keep my resolution so I might pick that one for the for this one uh, bump up that resolution there's advanced settings square cinemascope lots of cool stuff in there uh, even the subtitle settings I didn't realize they, they had that so from there I can go add to render queue and that waits for me up the top here so I can now press render all, rendering, uh, cool, this one's only going to take about 40 minutes to render, so it's pretty cool, that's one of the shorter ones I do. Um, this one I've just edited up here, or run you through how I edit, this is going to be episode uh, 9 of um, the Tropical Adventure series, so that's going to continue on after this. Oh, that's something else I was going to run you through as well, so we're not done yet. Um, I use magnifiers sometimes, so we've got Windows magnifier that we can use when it loads. Um, so I've currently got it docked up the top. So it it works alright for magnifying things. Um, if you don't need it magnified that much, you can get like 200 times magnification, so the difference between reading here and reading here is a bit better. Um, so that's one of the ones I've got. Uh, one of the ones I've gotten more recently is Zoom Text. So this is a really not, uh, a really cool one I've recently got, which is working well for me. So it's uh, Zoom Text and Jaws together, I believe, uh, which is good because this is a digital magnifier and a screen reader in the same time. So when it loads up, there we are. Zoom Text enable. Zoom text magnifier reader home. Zoom level 2. So I can increase the zoom in different levels. 2.2.3.5. 2 and the great part about this 12, is 6, 20, 20, I couldn't get that kind of woo, I couldn't get that kind of magnification with uh, Windows Magnifier. But I can get ridiculously high magnification with this one. 
if I needed 20, 10, oh, yeah. 5, 2, 2, 2, 1.8, 2. So I generally have it on 2 because that doubles the size of what I'm reading, which is really good. Caps lock plus B. Zoom text so magnifier just reader home. Zoom level 2. Telling me that I'm going through and reading things, so. G June 20th, 2022. GX010762 MP date modified type M size set type M type PH date GX010 GX010763 so, um, so I can go through and navigate without my um, without having a look so I can turn the monitor off and navigate through when I'm doing non visual stuff. Um, zoom, I, zoom text 2000 yes, zoom six, text zoom magnifier. Six, so that's one of the other ones I get. I have at the moment, which makes a massive difference for me, um, for going through and editing up, just accessing the computer is really good. Uh, another one I've recently started uh, started trying out as well is NVDA, which is Non-Visual Display Access. Um, so that one I'm starting to play with as well, but being Non-Visual Display Access is not a magnifier, it is just a screen reader. So. That's one of the ones I, I'm also starting to play with. Um, and it's interesting to start learning these different bits and pieces, and it all helps. Um, because I know I never have... I, I, I know that I never know when I'm going to um, have a massive deterioration in my vision, so even though I can... even though I can read nearly 2020 in the centre what I can see, I don't know how much longer I've got with that. So I'm starting to teach myself the magnifiers and the screen readers before I'm completely reliant on them. That way I have a bit of a better idea of what I'm navigating around. Um, and that's part of the reason why I want to get a desktop so I can have both these screens on the 27 inch monitors because that's a 15 and a half inch laptop which is sometimes a bit difficult. I've got to kind of lean in sometimes to read that whereas this I don't have uh, these monitors up the top here I don't have to lean in too much. Um, and the great part is that um, so when I uh, get this out of the way, I can really swing these around the desk however I want to. Um, if I really wanted to, I can tilt them around. I can uh, change that orientation. So if I wanted to navigate, uh, write a whole page document, I can tip it up on its edge and I can have Word running up and down if I wanted to. Or I can leave it how it is. Um, I've got to go into the settings to change the orientation in it. That way it's happy when it's flipped up on its edge. Um, but yeah, that makes it so much easier for me to use the desk now. Um, and you guys might see I've got cords and wires and stuff running everywhere. Uh, that's because I've got chargers, I charge things on here. Um, also as well with that, my, uh, my files that I, uh, use for editing, uh, they get quite massive sometimes. So, behind the, uh, monitor here, I've got a 5 terabyte hard drive that I dump all my media onto when I'm at home or when I get when I return home from my trips. Otherwise when I'm out and about I carry around a two terabyte portable hard drive. That way I'm never going to run out of uh, room for my media and if I do I'm uh, uh, filming too much. So for example the uh, the time I was out for this one uh, I was out over seven hours and I've probably got about five hours worth of footage in 4k which consumes a lot of um, a lot of uh, file size. So if I um, have a look at how much size my um, my folder does of the GoPro footage, is this is the footage from about this time for the last year and a half. Um, and on there I have a bit over a terabyte worth of footage. So that's roughly a month's worth of continual running a GoPro and recording in the highest quality that the 8 records in, which is what I've got. Um, and the other stuff. Um, but that's not the only one I can film with. As you guys can see, there's a couple of folders here. I've got Canon stuff from this camera. The drone, uh, the done stuff, so this is all the files I've gone through. Drone files, so this is the stuff from the drone, GoPro. And then I still film stuff on my phone sometimes. Um, so, on some days that I've filmed, I think I've recorded like eight hours of footage in some of them, so that takes it a really long process for me to go through and find the footage that I'm going to use. Uh, for example, if we were to 
Let's get back. Um, uh, it was the last year I filmed this stuff. So if I was to go through and find um, there we go, there's the folder. So I've got three different cameras that I was rolling this day because I didn't have this one yet. Um, and the way I find the footage is I go through, I click on the first one, brings it up in the Win Windows Media Player so I can see what I'm recording there. Um, which is really cool because then I can just simply click and drag into the timeline or into the media pool. Um, so that works really well for me. Um, but yeah, I've just got to, um, I've got to try and cut down sometimes on what I'm filming. For example, this video is now nearly 25 minutes long.